Hey everybody, welcome to our first video here at HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com discussing the SoftTube Console One mixing system. In this video, we're gonna just do a few things. Now before we get started, make sure you check the, check the playlist in the description box below where we're gonna have a series of SoftTube Console One videos. This will be video number one and then we will have videos on how to do everything from using it, all the functions, the walkthrough, how to how it sounds, all of that stuff. So make sure you check the link in the description box below. If you are in the market for a SoftTube Console One mixing system and you'd like to check it out at sweetwater.com, you can check that link in the description box as well. And by the way, that is an affiliate link. So you don't pay any more for the product if you purchase it from Sweetwater, but you do support what I do here at Home Recording Made Easy and I do appreciate that advance. And last but certainly not least, just to let you know, I did reach out to SoftTube to do this review for you guys they were gracious enough to send me this for free but they're not paying me for the video and they don't see this video before it goes live blah 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 why did i reach out to SoftTube to get this console one in my grubby little mitts so i could bring this to you because i've been on a quest for the last six months to check out all the different surface controls that are on the market to wreck to see what which one i felt was the most that feels like working on a real console because i have a real ssl a lot of people have asked me about what would you get that can control your daw that kind of gives you that real console analog feeling or experience but controls your DAW. So we've checked out all kinds of surface controls from different manufacturers. You can check my playlists on my channel here. So I wanted to check out Soft 2 Console 1 because a lot of people said some great things about it and they were nice enough to send it to me. So we did an unboxing video already. That is in the playlist. That's in the description box below. You can go check that out. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the build quality and stuff now, just so um, if you didn't see that video, but I urge you to go check that out because I do a more in-depth unboxing and putting this whole thing together so on and so forth so before we get into and then we're going to talk about how do we hook this up with studio one or any other daw how do we get started so that's what this video is going to be so first and foremost here is our soft tube console one it is a three-part system. Yes, three pieces. We have our channel strip up top here. We have our fader, console one fader at the bottom here, and that it is mounted in this beautiful wooden stand, which again, you can see in the unboxing video how I put that all together. These two units, the top unit and the bottom unit, could be purchased separately or as a set. Um, I highly recommend that you have both. It really gives it the full experience when you have both units, although you can just purchase, if you just want the channel strip control, you can purchase the top unit, or if you just want the fader unit, you can purchase that as well. The reason why they're sold separately is because the console one channel strip here on top was a product that came out long before the fader unit down here. So you may already own a console one and therefore you'd only have to buy the fader unit. Pretty cool, right? Or if you have no use for the console one and you just want fader control, you can do that as well. Also keep in mind that you can, we have 10 motorized faders here. This can actually, you can daisy chain um, of several of these together if you wanted to have more than 10 physical faders. You wouldn't be able to use the beautiful stand here. You'd have to lay them out side by side on your desk, but you can do that. Uh, SoftTube said there is no limit to how many of these things you can daisy chain together. They've seen people use as many as four or five of these. They give them 40 or 50 faders. You can do that, but they kind of recommend that two is kind of the sweet spot. And the reason why you, they say two is that would give you 20 physical faders and that corresponds and matches the 20 track select buttons on the console one here, which we'll talk about in another video. So that's kind of that. Now, overall build quality, built really well, made out of metal um, and plastic, but all of the stuff on both of these units feel really solid, really robust. It doesn't feel cheap or chintzy in any way. The faders are super smooth and they work really well with the DAW. There's no lag, there's no latency. Again, we'll talk about that later in other videos. All the knobs here, even though they are colorized, these are not colorized uh, as a standard product. I purchased some little just colored stickers on Amazon for like $4 and I just put them on here so I can uh, I can separate and see clearly the different sections of the channel strip again, which we'll talk about in the next video here, but all the knobs come standard in black. They are plastic, but they feel very smooth. They don't feel cheap or chintzy in any way. And you can also, there are third party manufacturers that you can pull the knob off and you can replace the knob would rubberize colorized knobs if you wanted to do that. I elected to just 
use the stickers. So build quality is great, feels really good, doesn't feel cheap or chintzy. It is priced right for the quality that you get. It's really, really high quality. It is. Go watch the unboxing video if you want to see more detail. So how do you set this thing up with your DAW? We're just using Studio One here, but this is uh, this is compatible with most uh, popular DAWs on the market. You can uh, we'll check them out with other DAWs in the future. But with Studio One, it's really really simple. You have uh, each one of these is control uh, is plugged in, which you don't see on camera here. But they're two USB cables, one for the uh, channel strip here, one for the console one fader. You plug them directly into your computer. Um, SoftTube recommends you plug them directly into the computer and not a powered USB hub. However, I did test it with a power USB hub. It did work for me, but if you want the most consistent results, plug it directly into, into your computer if you can. So you have two USB cables and the console one fader has a power um, adapter because these are motorized. So you only have to plug in three cables. Once you plug in three cables into the computer, your DAW will just recognize it, at least Studio One does. Now, when you first get your console one home, after you register it with SoftTube, because it'll give you some registration cards, you are gonna download on their website, the SoftTube Central app, which will open up for you so you can see, and I'll move it over here on the screen once it opens, so hopefully you can see it. And you're gonna log in and create a, uh, a username and password if you don't already have other SoftTube products, but once you do that, you're going to see all the plugins that you have on your system. Let me move this over a little bit more for us here. And more importantly, you're going to see once you register your console one and console one fader, you are going to see where you're going to go ahead and you're going to install it, plus any other plugins that you purchase. And here are the two you're going to install, Console One and Console One Fader. You're going to want to download that to your computer. Pretty standardized stuff or any other soft two plugins that you have. Pretty easy. You want to do that with your DAW closed, not open like I have it here on the screen. Once you do that and you boot up your DAW, in our case Studio One, it is going to drop all the SoftTube plugins in the SoftTube folder, and lo and behold, we're gonna have ones here called Console One. Now, you're gonna see two versions of this. <clears throat> Studio One, if you click on the top one and look down at the bottom here at the browser window, this is the VST3 version of the plugin, and then we also have the VST2 version. According to SoftTube, you want to use the VST3 version if you want Console One Fader to control what's going on on the screen, which is what we want. Why would we buy this if we didn't want it? You want to use the VST3 version. When we use the 3ST3 version, we are going to drop that onto every one of our tracks in our session, which you'll see uh, you may not be able to see quite yet because the console one is up on the screen is quite big. But trust me, if you look above my video here, you'll see a lot of my tracks here and it has the console one plug. And if I just double click and open any one of those, you'll see here that it recognizes the track number and the track name. The VST3 version does that. The VST2 version does not. Don't know if every DAW automatically populates that for you. I didn't have to type that in and automatically recognized it, but Studio One does. And then once you have this plug in here, you can just close this because we're not going to be using that. But you want to get the VS33 version on all of your tracks. Once you do that, it will recognize, Studio One will recognize what's going on in your session here. So for example, and then we'll end this video and pick it up, we'll, we'll walk through all the controls. But if I go over to track one here, or I'm gonna come over here to uh, to track 11 so you can see it a little bit better. The blue track right beneath the video, or I'm gonna go to track 13 here, 14, the green track right next to my video here. You're gonna see that's the acoustic guitar track. If I take one of my faders and push it up, you will see it controls that here, okay? or the next track here, or the track before it here, right next to the left of my, my beautiful face here on screen. You'll see as I'm moving the three faders on the, on the console one, it is moving those faders as well. Really good, nice and smooth, no lag, no latency, no nothing, it works really, really well. So Studio One will actually recognize this, but you gotta have Console One, the plugin, as the first insert on every one of your tracks. So you plug in, 
with your three USB cables, your power adapter, you go out to SoftTube Central, you download the console one, you, you boot up Studio One, and then you take the VS3 3 version, put it on all your tracks, and, and SoftTube's console one mixing system here will absolutely recognize it. So that's how you get set up quickly and easily with the SoftTube console one mixing system. Check out the next video where we're actually going to walk through the controls of the channel strip and of the fader itself so you know what all the buttons do. And then we're also going to talk about the beautiful SSL 4000E channel strip, which you see popping up on the screen here as well. We're going to talk about how that all kind of works and how these two pieces actually control that plugin. And then in subsequent, subsequent videos, we're going to get into mixing. You're going to hear some sounds. So once you get yourself plugged in and hooked up, Come on back for the next video and we'll talk about what all these controls do.